I coined the phrase flying monkeys in the early 1990s to describe people who are under the spell of the narcissist. The narcissist uses these extensions of himself in order to interact with victims, current and former victims, and in order to manipulate uh, people into highly specific, specified and specific behaviors which are conducive to the narcissist's shared fantasy. As an aside, the phrase flying monkeys is not inspired by the Wizard of Oz. In the Wizard of Oz, they are called winged monkeys. And actually, I coined the phrase flying monkeys, having watched a National Geographic documentary where monkeys took over a temple, an abandoned temple, and they were flying off the parapets and the fortifications of the temple, and they were in control of this highly intricate architectural compound. I found it eerie and terrifying that a group of flying monkeys <laughs> could take over a civilization, in effect. The narcissist uses flying monkeys to take over. It's a hostile takeover mechanism. And he converts people around him in order to do his bidding. And when I say he and his, it could be she and her. Half of all narcissists are women. Today we're going to discuss how to turn the narcissist flying monkeys against him or her. My name is Sam Vaknin. I am the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. I am also a former visiting professor of psychology and currently a professor of clinical psychology and business management in CIAPS in Cambridge, United Kingdom. So let's delve, let's fly right in. <laughs> fly monkeys are usually involved in two types of narcissistic activities. The first type is when the narcissist breaks up, devalues and discards his erstwhile pseudo-intimate partner within the shared fantasy, or when the narcissist himself has been discarded, devalued and dumped by said intimate partner. In this case, post, post breakup, the narcissist uses flying monkeys in order to spy on the intimate partner or in order to manipulate her or in order to destroy her reputation or damage her in some way, punish her in a way. So it's part of a vindictive agenda, a grudge and payback time. These are the two cases where flying monkeys are used. Now, one of the major instruments in obtaining uh, the second course of action is known as a smear campaign. Smear campaign is the persistent, structured spreading of misinformation, lies, exaggerations, and half-truths about a specific person. In this case, the narcissist, erstwhile intimate partner, or former friend, or colleague, etc., etc. Now, the only correct response to a smear campaign is no response. I repeat this, the only correct response to a smear campaign is no response. There is no other type of response to a smear campaign that is a winning strategy. It all leads to further escalation or to an exacerbation of the situation. It never ends well for the victim, especially. There is damage to reputation in a smear campaign, but this damage to reputation is zero or non-existent among true friends. True friends are not going to listen to the messaging of the smear campaign. They're not going to believe any of the lies and half-truths. They're going to dismiss, they're going to discard attempts to turn their mind and opinion of you um, counterfactually. So your true friends are not going to be affected by the smear campaign. Your reputation is safe and intact with true friends. The same goes for workplaces, which are essentially just, and workplaces 
that are organized as communities. In such workplaces, the damage to repu your reputation is likely to be minimal. And at the very least, there would be procedures to allow you to demonstrate your innocence and your honesty. So you don't need to worry about the impacts and aftershocks and after effects of the smear campaign among your true friends and in a workplace that is anyhow benevolent, commu communal and pro-social. You do need to worry um, about fake friends and about workplaces that are organized around bullying and power plays and mind games. <laughs> but this is exactly the utility of a smear campaign. It is a useful filter. It is a membrane. In the wake of a smear campaign, you will see the true face of people around you. You will have discovered who is your true loyal uh, friend and who is just pretending to be a friend. You will find out whether you, the workplace you've dedicated your time and effort and resources to stands behind you, has your back, or whether they are actually just waiting for your downfall in order to gloat. So a smear campaign is one hell of a way to weed out fake friends, um, psychophants, um, workplaces which don't have your back, non-supportive environments and enemies pretending to be friends and even frenemies. So don't regard the smear campaign as a negative uh, actuality. It's actually a very positive event that allows you to purify and cleanse your life so that you remain attached to and embedded in environments and with people you can trust. Okay, still, there are situations, rare however they may be, where you cannot get rid of the narcissist or his flying monkeys. Situations where you're essentially a hostage of circumstances, dependencies which are legally encoded, common children, financial arrangements, co-ownership of businesses, etc. In these situations, you have to somehow cope with the onslaught of flying monkeys. Flying monkeys amplify the narcissist's message. They aggrandize the narcissist. They magnify his efforts. They are like a multiplier of a narcissist. So rather than cope with a single narcissist, you suddenly find yourself um, confronting an army, a zombie army of would-be narcissists, wannabe narcissists, echoes of the narcissist and shadows of the narcissist. That could be very unsettling and very frightening even. One of the main techniques you can use is to turn the flying monkey. Now, in order to explain this, I need to regress a bit to the field of counterintelligence. So in counterintelligence, we turn agents into assets. We turn agents of the other side into our agents, our assets. So this is known as a double agent. So if I work for a counterintelligence service, and then there's a guy or a girl sent by the opposing counterintelligence service, by the intelligence service of the enemy. And this guy or girl infiltrate my intelligence service. And they're working for the enemy. They're working for the adversary. I can turn this person to become my agent rather than the agent of the enemy. And this is known as turning an agent into an asset or double agent. You could do this with the flying monkeys. The first thing you need to do is you need to appear to be collaborative and compliant. You need to feign or fake gratitude to the flying monkey. You need to thank the flying monkey profusely. You need to pretend to listen carefully at with ruptured attention uh, to be attentive to what the flying monkey has to say. You need to note everything down. You need to nod your head. You need to be amazed 
visibly and ostentatiously by the flying monkey's intelligence and by his heartwarming and heart-touching loyalty to you because flying monkeys pretend to be loyal to you. They pretend to have your best interests in mind. They fake friendship. They're very dangerous in this sense. They are enablers of the narcissist and they are your enemies. So, but you must play the game. You must play along. Pretend that you're more stupid than you are, <laughs> more naive, more gullible, more open to manipulation, and that you have been deceived efficaciously by the flying monkey. You need to give the flying monkey the impression that he has succeeded to pull the wool over your eyes. He succeeded to deceive you. He succeeded to mislead you. And so you become collaborative and compliant and submissive and grateful. And you need to communicate this to the flying monkey so that the flying monkey's guard is down. Flying monkey reaches the conclusion that mission accomplished. I own the target. I own the mark. Another option is to act as if you are scared, as if you're scared of the flying monkey, as if you're scared of the narcissist. This is an excellent technique because when you're scared, the other party becomes less defensive. The other party gloats. The other party celebrates success. Your visible, ostentatious fear and the, the fact that you have been successfully intimidated encourages the other party to act recklessly, thoughtlessly, and to commit mistakes. It allows you to elicit additional information about the narcissist and his circus ring of flying monkeys. It lowers the guard of the conspirators against you. So let's summarize this first phase. Make a choice. Either you appear to be collaborative, submissive, compliant, obsequious, grateful, and let the flying monkey think that his mission has succeeded and he will report it back to the narcissist. Or you act as if you're terrified, as if you're scared, as if you're paralyzed, disabled, and convey to the narcissist and the flying monkey that your, your, your defenses have been demolished, that you are um, absolutely not going to resist, that they can do anything to you. This will cause them to behave recklessly to commit stupid mistakes and will allow you to glean a lot of additional very critical information. This is stage one. Stage two, having acquired the flying monkey, because when you behave in the aforementioned way, the flying monkey believes that he owns you. The flying monkey believes that you are his. And again, when I say he, it's a she. Yeah, Flying monkeys could definitely be women. women. So when you give the flying monkey the impression that mission accomplished, I have succeeded, I have taken over the target, the mark is mine, um, the victim is terrified, intimidated, paralyzed, grateful to me as a flying monkey, and uh, accepts my message, believes my information, is collaborative. When you have given the flying monkey this erroneous information, starts to feed the flying monkey with wrong information, with disinformation. As you feed the flying monkey with disinformation, this disinformation is bound liable to reach the narcissist. Any morsel, any morsel of news, any bit of data, any information that you give to the flying monkey is gathered eagerly by said flying monkey and forwarded immediately to the narcissist. This is a channel of communication. This is your opportunity to contaminate the narcissist's mind with disinformation, wrong information, counterproductive information, useless information, to lead the narcissist astray, to cause him to behave in ways which undermine his own goals, to make the wrong assumptions about you, your life, your social network, your plans. This is your chance to mislead the narcissist so dramatically, so radically, 
and so extremely that the narcissist campaign against you will never recover. Now, of course, always embed nuggets of truth in the information that you provide to the flying monkey. Never lie 100% of the time. Never provide 100% unadulterated, unmitigated disinformation. Always make sure that 10%, 20%, 30% is the truth, are the facts. So if the narcissist bothers to cross-check and verify the information that you had provided to, the, to him through the flying monkey, the narcissist would find out and latch and latch onto these nuggets of truth and would believe the total package. These are common techniques in counterintelligence. When we turn an agent, when we convert the enemy's flying monkeys into our flying monkeys. Number two, number three, spy on the narcissist. Anticipate the narcissist's next moves via the flying monkey. As the flying monkey tries to acquire your trust, as the flying monkey acts as if he or she is your best friend, has your interests in mind, is protective of you, promotes you, defends you, as the flying monkey is so immersed and so engaged in acting, in pretending, in faking, this is the opportunity to obtain real information about the narcissist, the narcissist's whereabouts, the narcissist's plans, the narcissist's emotions, the narcissist's thoughts, the narcissist's uh, involvements with other people, the narcissist's conspiracy against you, etc. The flying monkey is likely to provide you with a lot of truthful information in an attempt to make you trust him, to acquire your allegiance, to create a sensation of we against the world. It's us against the world. So the flying monkey is going to try to create a cult-like environment with you, pretending to be on your side against the narcissist very often. But to do so, the flying monkey has to provide you with useful, valuable information about the narcissist. Make maximum effort to secure this kind of data. Play hard to get. While you, while you are being collaborative and compliant and submissive and visibly ostentatiously grateful and trusting and naive and gullible, while you are playing all this, also play hard to get. Don't give away too much at the beginning. Let the flying monkey barter or trade his nuggets of truth for your nuggets of fal falsities and lies and disinformation. It, it's gonna, it's, it works. Try it out. You won't believe how much information you can obtain from the flying monkey about the narcissist. Next, through the flying monkey, you can get acquainted with other flying monkeys. Very often flying monkeys act in groups. And these groups are cohesive, coherent. They share the same agenda, the same philosophy, the same modus operandi, modes of uh, methods of operation, and the same connection to the narcissist. The narcissist is the brain, the heart, the core of the operation, the headquarters. And the flying monkeys are flying monkeys. But they know each other in the majority of cases. They know each other. Use one flying monkey to identify the others involved in the conspiracy or the campaign against you. Ask the flying monkey to introduce you to other flying monkeys, all the time pretending to be enthralled, to be amazed, to be grateful, to be, to be absolutely willing to, col to collude and to collaborate with the flying monkeys. Uh, Pretend that you find the flying monkeys trustworthy, helpful, honest, and your friends friendly, so, so that they feel comfortable to introduce you to other flying monkeys. 
the flying monkey would operate under the assumption that the higher the number of flying monkeys, the better the outcome as far as a narcissist is concerned. It's like if three people, if one person tells you you are drunk, you can ignore them. But if three people tell you you are drunk, you better go to bed. So it's the same principle here. The narcissist sends multiple flying monkeys your way, all of them promulgating, announcing and pronouncing the same message. As the message, as an identical message flows from the mouths of multiple flying monkeys, the belief is that you will finally succumb. You will finally accept the message. You will finally recognize the truthfulness and veracity of the message. So narcissists never use a single flying monkey. Usually there are many of them. Ask the flying monkey du jour, flying monkey in touch with you, to introduce you to the others. Listen to their, what they have to say. Use them the same way. Use them to feed the narcissist with misinformation and disinformation. Use them to spy on the narcissist. Gather information on what the narcissist is planning to do next, and so on and so forth. At some point, the flying monkeys will be the fall of the narcissist. The flying monkeys will undermine the narcissist. At some point, the flying monkeys will have given you so much information. And of course, record everything. Absolutely record everything. Legally, of course. So you will have you will have so much information given to you on a silver platter by the flying monkeys that you're ready to make your move. You're ready to expose the narcissist's often criminal conspiracy. You're ready to go to law enforcement, to the media, or online, the social media. The narcissist and his flying monkeys usually commit crimes, usually harassment, and much worse than that. And so that's one way. The other way, even if they hadn't committed any crimes, which is very rare, even then, their behavior is conspiratorial. It's very clear that the narcissist and his flying monkeys engage in an in a, in attempt to take you down, to destroy you, to damage you, to ruin you, to devastate you, and people close to you, your nearest and dearest. This is frowned upon by the public. No one likes conspirators and evil, malevolent, malicious people out to destroy other people. No one likes that. Even though the narcissist and his flying monkeys are likely to claim victimhood, they usually compromise themselves verbally, in written messages, and with their actions. So a narcissist and his flying monkeys are likely to claim that they have been victimized by you. You are the perpetrator. You are the abuser. But they will have given you reams and reams and reams of data to prove that they are the criminals. They are the conspirators. They are the ones who commit abuse on a regular basis. They are the ones who have been verbally abusive. They are the ones who misbehaved in the most egregious manner and ways possible and targeted you and everyone around you, your loved ones, your colleagues, your workplace, and so on and so forth, trying to destroy your livelihood, trying to take away your reputation, trying to affect you in some way so as to disable you, to paralyze you, and essentially to push you, if possible, to suicide. So flying monkeys, in order to accomplish their agenda and, and their goals, on behalf of the narcissists, trade, with, trade a lot of information, divulge, divulge a lot of information, expose their intentions, and push to the limit by you. you. You play hard to get, but on the verge of. It's like, I'm hard to get, but if, if you only invest a little more, you're going to obtain, you're going to accomplish your goal. So the flying monkey goes a bit further, a step further, the whole nine yards. And, and so at some point, the flying monkeys expose the narcissist, his conspiracy, his plans, 
his malevolence, his sadism, his uh, criminality, his antisocial behavior, and so on and so forth. So let me recap the five steps. Number one, fake, fake collaboration, fake compliance, fake submissiveness, fake gratitude to the flying monkey. Pretend that you have fallen for the scam, that you're gullible, that you're naive, that you're easy to manipulate. Let them believe that they have succeeded. Act as if you're scared, terrified, ostentatiously. Give them all the material they need to believe that they are taking you down, that they have suppressed your activity, that you are afraid of them. This makes them incautious. Their guard is down. They gloat. They become uh, grandiose, reckless, defiant, and they make mistakes, many mistakes. Wait for them to make these mistakes and document these mistakes. Keep the documentation of these mistakes in the evidence file against them. Point number two, feed the narcissist via the flying monkeys with wrong information, disinformation, useless information containing some nuggets of truth that redirect the narcissist's efforts and energy, flying monkeys uh, attempts, redirect all this um, in absolutely wrong path and trajectory, uh, diverting them from the real your real vulnerabilities, your real soft spots, creating for them an image of yourself that is completely wrong. Number three, spy on the narcissist via the flying monkeys. The flying monkeys are likely to provide you with a lot of information about the narcissist. Use it to anticipate the narcissist's next moves in the conspiracy against you. Number four, identify other people involved in this conspiracy or campaign against you, other flying monkeys. Once you've identified the totality, once you we have a list of names of who participated in the conspiracy together with the narcissist, and a conspiracy it is. Just to be clear, a conspiracy is, is a crime. It's a criminal offense. Once you have done this, you are on safe ground. Number four, the other option is keep the evidence. Keep the evidence that you have amassed, that you've accumulated against the narcissist and his flying circus of monkeys for future use in case the narcissist and his flying monkeys attempt a second round or collude with other mon flying monkeys, try to extort you, blackmail you, threaten you, terrify you, intimidate you, prevent you from acting in certain ways and so on and so forth, then you have this overwhelming body of evidence against them and which would allow you to, for example, work with lawyers and with law enforcement to put a stop to the smear campaign and all these allied activities. And again, believe it or not, these are criminal activities in every jurisdiction that I'm aware of. So this is on how to turn flying monkeys against the narcissist. Think of flying monkeys as spies, as intelligence agents who have penetrated your organization, then turn them against the narcissist. Convert the flying monkeys into double agents, double flying monkeys, working for you rather than working for the narcissist, even if they are not aware that they are actually working for you. Use this five-point scheme and you will win any smear campaign and any attempt to take you down. Good luck.